Now that we have an About and a Welcome page, we'll want to add some content to the page. Right now, it has some default placeholder content. We could go into the corresponding view pages. For instance, to edit the About page, we'd go to App slash Views slash Static Pages because that's the controller that has the About action and edit about.html.erb right now. Notice that the file has the extension .html.erb, which tells us that it is an HTML file with embedded Ruby. We'll get to embedded Ruby in HTML once we start editing the page, but before that, we'll be writing some RSpec tests. But we haven't written any code yet. What are we testing? How can we test something we haven't written yet? I hear some of you asking. To which the answer is, that is exactly the point. In the world of test-driven development, which is heavily adopted by the Rails community, you write a test for a function or a piece of code, make sure that it fails first, then write the code or implementation for your function, and test again to make sure that it passed. Then, after that, you might refactor it, running the tests again to make sure that your refactoring didn't change the expected behavior of your app. It might seem a little unintuitive and a bit like extra unnecessary work at first, but writing tests will force you to break down your app into smaller, more manageable and, well, testable parts. Having tests in place also ensures that if you later on decide to change some other part of the system, you can always run the tests again to make sure that all the other parts of the system will still work as they should. If any new edits to the code has changed how the system works, Running the automated tests would show you a failing test, and because you know which test failed, you would by extension also know which part of the code to fix, or if you perhaps need to change the implementation of the new code you added. If we want to write RSpec tests, we'll have to install RSpec first. Let's collapse all these other directories for now, and just leave the ones we'll be dealing with expanded. Open up the gem file. Remember, this is the file that lists all the gems that will be available for your app and scroll downwards. You'll see a group doc directive. We'll create a new group directive just below that for development and test. What this means is that any gem specified under this directive will only be available in the development and test environments. Now we'll say gem rspec rails. This will tell bundle install to add rspec rails to your project's development and test environments. In this project, we'll be using RSpec Rails 2.14. Make sure to specify that in your gem file to get the correct version of RSpec Rails. Having RSpec Rails in the development environment is to give us access to RSpec specific generators. How do I know what gem to use? In the case of RSpec, most of the Rails community uses it, and most introduction tutorials to Rails have instructions for installing RSpec. This book by Michael Hartle is what you'll want to read in case you want to find out more. There are other test frameworks besides RSpec, like Minitest and TestUnit, which is Rails' default unit testing tool. We'll stick with RSpec for now, but it's good to know that you're free to choose from a variety of libraries that provide various functionalities and styles for you to adapt to your liking. Okay, so we've added RSpec Rails to our gem file. Let's get this gem installed for our app. We'll go to our terminal and run bundle install. This should install whatever gems in our gem file that our app doesn't already have. Before we continue with writing our specs, we still need to do some initializations for our spec to work with our app. The first thing we need to prepare is the database for the test environment. Let's check out our database.yml in config. As you'll notice, our database.yml by default already has databases specified for the development, test, and production environments. There's very little configuration required for SQL Lite 3, and we can most probably continue using SQL Lite 3 for testing the entire way through, so it looks like we can leave this config file as is for now. To make sure there actually are databases ready for our environments, we'll use a rake command to create them. Go to your terminal and run rake db create all. If you didn't already have a database so far, well, you do now. RSpec comes with a Rails generator that installs and creates the necessary files and folders for RSpec to work with Rails. Let's have a look at what generators RSpec has for us. In your terminal, type Rails generate minus H. With the minus H option, 
Rails Generate will show you all the generators that it currently has. If you've run Rails Generate minus H before, this time around, you might notice the addition of the RSpec generators. The generator we want to run first is the RSpec install generator. Let's see if that generator requires any additional parameters. Type Rails Generate RSpec install, which is the generator we want to run, and add a minus H. Remember, you can do this for most Unix commands. Ah, look! There's even a pretend option that lets you run it to see what it would create without actually doing anything. Let's try that first to see what RSpec install would actually do. Right, looks like RSpec install would have created a hidden RSpec file. In the Unix world, hidden files have a dot prepended to them and aren't shown in directory listings unless you specifically ask it to list hidden files. The dot RSpec file is used to store the command line options for RSpec that you want to have by default. We'll have a look at that file later on. It looks like the installer also will create a spec directory with spec helper and rails helper Ruby files. You know they're Ruby files because of their .rb extension. Spec helper previously was where most of the RSpec configurations used to be, but they've now been moved to rails helper. You can find out more about RSpec and its inner workings and even documentation on how to use it at relishapp.com. Currently, we shouldn't need to change any configurations, so let's go ahead and run RSpec install. This time, without the minus H or minus P options, so it actually executes. Let's have a look at the files that were created. Looks like Spec Helper is a skeleton for some sample configurations that have been commented out, and Rails Helper just loads Spec Helper and does some initialization for RSpec. But where's .RSpec? Well, it's a hidden file, and it seems that Cloud9 IDE doesn't show hidden files by default. Let's try and find it in our terminal. Type ls to list the contents of your directory. ls is a Unix command to list files and folders in a directory. However, it looks like ls alone doesn't show hidden files. Let's see if ls has a help option. Whoops, looks like minus h might be an actual option for ls. Let's try minus minus help. Ah, there we go. Looks like there is a help here. So, minus A says list all and does not ignore entries beginning with dot. I think this is what we're looking for. While minus L says it will do a long format listing, which should show us the details of the file. So let's use that. Just so you know, minus H and minus minus help aren't the only ways that help can be found on Unix. There is also a handy tool called man which actually stands for manual pages. You can find the man pages for most Unix commands by typing man followed by that command. To find the man pages for ls, just type man ls. Let's try this. There we go. A nicely formatted man page for ls. We already know what we need to find the hidden .rspec file. So let's close this man page by typing q as instructed in the bottom bar of the man page. Okay, let's do this. ls minus al. Aha, there she is. Dot rspec. Let's have a look at what's inside this dot rspec file. Since we can't see it in the IDE, we'll need another tool to read it with. Thankfully, Linux and most other Unixes come fully equipped with powerful text editors like VI or Emacs. Some might even have simpler tools like Nano or Pico. Let's see if this Cloud9 Linux machine has Nano, which is a very simple command line text editor. Type Nano and see if your shell likes it. Aha! An empty Nano editor opened up. That's good. Now let's close this guy. How do we do that? A quick scan of the screen reveals a list of commands at the bottom. Let's see. It looks like to exit, you'd need to press Ctrl plus X. Let's try that. Great. Now let's try nanoing that dot rspec file. Type nano space dot rspec. Ta-da! Now you see the contents of dot rspec. I mentioned earlier that dot rspec just added some options to the rspec command. So this means that every time you run rspec, it will run with the options dash dash color and dash dash require spec underscore helper by default. Great. That's good to know. Next time you find yourself typing out an option for RSpec every time, you might want to consider adding it into this file. Let's leave this file alone and close it. 
Control X. Let's just resize our terminal and close all the files we don't need at the moment. Now, back to writing in our spec test, or spec file as they're called, for what we need to build for our app. Let's start off by writing some specs for our static pages controller that we generated earlier. Because we've installed our spec rails, any rails generate controller command will, from now on, generate the specified controller along with the corresponding empty spec file. However, since we generated our static pages controller before we had our spec rails installed, we'll have to create the spec files for it manually. Create a controller subdirectory under spec and create a new file called static pages controller spec.rb. That's static underscore pages underscore controller underscore spec dot rb. Let's give our spec a run and make sure that it's actually working. In your terminal, type r spec space spec. What this does is run all the specs in your spec folder. Since we haven't written any specs yet, it should say zero examples were tested. Let's try this out. Great. So that worked. Let's write our first controller test. Open up the static pages controller spec RB file. Our spec uses its own custom syntax, so it won't look exactly very much like the rest of Rails. In our spec, you first describe what you're testing and then specify what its expected behavior should be. Here's an example describing your static pages controller. First, we'll require spec helper, which does some initialization and loading. Then we'll say describe static pages controller. And inside that, we'll say describe get about because we want to test what happens when a get request for the about action is made to the static pages controller. Next, we'll specify what the expected outcome should be, which is that it should render the about template, which is our corresponding html.erb file. Notice that the previous describe and this it directive are passed a string describing the test that we're doing. It's inside the it section where we do the actual testing. Let's do that. So when we get about, we expect the response to render the template about. Okay, let's save this. Now we can run our spec spec again, and it should be running one example that passes. We've got a welcome page too, so let's make sure that's covered in our test as well. We can copy the get about lines and just change it a bit here to say welcome instead of about, and we've got our second test. Let's run our spec spec again. You'll see that it now runs two examples and both of them are passing. Now let's try write our first failing test and then get it to pass. Let's say we also want a contact us page with the URL contact. This contact us page should also be handled by the static pages controller. Let's copy the welcome section and just change it to say contact. Now, save the file, and our test should be expecting a get contact to render the contact template. Let's run our RSpec spec again and see what happens. This time, you'll see that it runs three examples with one failure. Let's see what the failure is. It says here that no route matches static pages controller with the action contact. Let's correct that. We'll open up our routes.rb file in config and add a route that should satisfy this. Here, we're adding a get static pages slash contact directive, which will create a route for the URL static underscore pages slash contact that will get the contact action from the static pages controller. Save the updated routes file and run our spec again. Now you'll see that the failure message has changed. Let's take a look at what it says. It says that the action contact could not be found for the static pages controller. This seems easy enough to fix. Let's open up our static pages controller.rb file and define a contact action. 
Now save the controller file and run rspec spec again and see what message it gives you this time. Looks like our contact action is missing a template. Let's add the corresponding view file to fix this. We'll create a contact.html.erb file under the static pages directory under views and fill that up with a header and a paragraph and save it. Now, we'll run our spec spec once more and you'll find that all our tests have passed. This should mean that we should be able to view the contact page in our browser. Let's see if it works as it should. Run your server, click on Run, Run Configurations, and use a previously saved configuration, or you can click on Run With and pick Ruby on Rails. Copy the URL your app is running at, paste it in a browser URL, add the static pages slash contact path to it, and press Enter. Yay! You've now successfully written your first specs and written the implementations to get them to pass. Congratulations!